it, the calc is easy, guys. So check it out if you understand concept wise. Okay. And maybe what I'll do is I'll upload this so that other people have an understanding of it. So um, you got your F sub P going this way. And then we also have it where it's also going this way, right? And so what is the difference, right? Well, right. And so if it's this way, let's say that's A, that's A. If it's in this way, that's B and that's B. Do you guys see that? Ah, uh, yes. Right. So then if you, if you have whatever low this is, let's just say it's equal to one, right? And let's just say that you either know where the center of mass is or you take two thirds of the height, right? So simple static says that moment is equal to force, which is your F sub P times distance, right? Which is essentially your two thirds the height, right? Yes. So yes. essentially you'll get this moment. Yeah, you were talking about that earlier. Right. And so the the this and these are gonna be your reaction point, right? Mm -hmm. So those are where the um anchors our anchors are like the, yeah, the, the spring legs. when I asked you. Yeah. Okay. So the, these are the legs, right? And and so what we do is we do a TC couple because when we look at the basic of moment, right? This rotation can be resolved by um let's see. that kind of moment, right? So essentially this force times distance will give you that moment, which resolves that moment because it's equal and opposite. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. this is a force times a distance, right? Mm -hmm. So that essentially creates, um, in a sense, this moment that way. That plus one, yeah. Which is yes. counter to that moment, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that goes to basic statics. So we're just thing. trying to cancel it out. Exactly. So that's ah. this. so you're trying to just do this. So essentially, to find out what this is, it's your TC couple, which is your distance, d. So the way I do it is, TC, which is your tension or compression, is equal to your moment divided by d. It's essentially a backwards formula of this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're using the, the, the to resolve it, anyways. So whatever load you get, that's either going to be upward for tension, downward for compression. Well, for anchors, do we care if it's downward? Uh, let's yes. say no. No. We don't. Think about it. It's because it's already to the ground. It's already anchored to the ground, right? Right. If you have a leg, anchor to the building. Right. Here's your anchor. Right. If you have a downward load, right. And this is your base plate. This stuff is connected to the base plate, right? This is your base plate. Right. That's that plate that spreads a load. Here's what it, it looks like in 3D, right? So it pushes down. Now, essentially, this anchor is just not doing anything. It's it's literally got zero load due to compression. Right, because that's for that's for the forces from going left to right. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So there's like holes for the anchors, right? And you've got this post. You know that's got a load in and out of the page that is going into the page compression. So mm -hmm. essentially, any bolts that you have here it would just slide right through. Okay, makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Right. That makes so sense. therefore, anchors and compression we don't care about. It's not mm -hmm. going to see a load. The anchor actually won't even see a compression load. Okay. Um, so going back to this now, um, so so when we do that, we can find this TC couple. And essentially, we know that compression doesn't really matter. So we only care about the tension load, right? So whatever that load is, is going to be the load at this leg, right? Now, keep in mind, because we took the entire force, FP, and if I was to kind of draw this out, I actually look at the stuff. It seems like we have multiple legs, right? Yes. So let's just say the total amount of legs is six right, on each side. So essentially you'll take whatever this load, it's shared between one, two, three, four, five, five right legs, by 12. right? So you take this divided by five legs. Right. Oh, the ones only feeling the-, the, the Yeah, um, because tension, essentially right? all, essentially all these 
Okay, hold on. It's moment this way. So sorry, I I, I drew the moment. Let me do it this way. So when I do it this way, we know that the, the pink is experiencing tension. So mm -hmm. these are all your tension, right? Due yes. to this moment, right? If you if you did this rotation, you could feel that these are all in tension, yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so we know that these are all in compression on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't care about the compression one. We only care about the tension. Now, theoretically, the earthquake can go this way also, right? And because it's symmetric, we don't really care too much. Now, if you had like an L shape or something like that, some kind of weird funky stuff, this moment and that moment will start to matter because your legs are different. Your geometry is totally different. They're not symmetric, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's beyond the scope of this project. That's kind of more complicated, right? Um, and, and so, so you've got the compression um, on, on these, right? So whatever we have right here, this, whatever TC divided by the number of legs on each side, so five, that essentially will give you the load, the tension load on the base plate. Now on the base plate now, so let's just say for fun when we did this, we get say um, 200 pounds up for fun, okay? So that's per base plate, 200 pounds up per base plate. Okay, so that's essentially what's gonna answer it. Now for the shear, you assume equal distribution. So it's gonna be your, your sh uh, base plate shear is going to equal to your total FP divided by total number of legs um, summation, right? So it's going to be your FP, whatever that becomes, divided by its total legs because everything's sharing that shear. So here it would be 10. Okay, so when we have that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this, taking this, and that's how we start our problem. And you know what? I'm going to upload this so that everybody has this information and everybody can kind of see it also. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll, I'll take a, you know, I'll, I'll cut it so we're just focused on this problem. And, and so when we take those two loads, we've got um, horizontal is, and let's just say that this is 100 for fun. And that can go this way or this way, right? So we have mm -hmm. 100 and 200. So that's what it looks like. So you essentially have a horizontal load that's actually applied at the base, right? Because we've already counted for like the moments and all that stuff. We're saying that that's a hundred pounds. So I think in the software, it will look more like this, saying it's a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you've got an upward load of 200 pounds. Which was the tension we solved earlier. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. got it. Now we have total amount of acres, so we're gonna we're gonna divide it again, right? So it really depends on how you approach your analysis, but let's just say for fun, I have an anchor here, an anchor here, an anchor here, an anchor here. Would that now, mean divide by four now? So that's so you've got to be careful when you do that, right? That's what I was talking about the overlapping. Okay. If your distance of this is far enough that you have um, you have full cone failure. So what that means is that here's your anchor, right? And here's your like little sleeve, whatever. That essentially has that cone shape failure, right? Oh yeah. As long as that. it's not overlapping, right? You could just look at it as one anchor, right? Because it, it, it's going to essentially be the same. In other words, what you don't want to do is have it this close where they're overlapping so much. And what ends up happening is that you would be overestimating the capacity. Therefore, it's not good. Mm. Okay. Oh, we just designed for one of those? So it depends on how you approach it. Because um, what your sketch is going to do is 
you're going to define the geometry. Like I put some numbers on there and they may not work. So keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. So the base plate and all that stuff, all that geometry that I drew out is just a starting point. You're supposed to fill it out yourself at the end of the day. That's part of the sketch of the assignment. Mm -hmm. So if you know that this distance is far enough, then you could just look at it as a single anchor. Okay. If it's not, then you could you model this whole entire thing. You have the ability to choose whichever way. But if you do it this way, the advantage is that it will tell you if you're too close. Okay. The other thing that you have to watch out for is that if the edge of the concrete, wherever it may be, right? Like if you're too far to the edge, right? Essentially, you're gonna you're not gonna get the full capacity. Okay, so that's why the edge distance is important. Was that edge distance provided in the homework assignment? You decide what it is. We just, You're okay. the designer. Just, got it. You're going to direct who the contractor to make it a certain way. That's okay. your job. Right. Okay. So when, once we do that, now let's just say it is this way. But okay. So let's take a approach that what if it was one anchor, right? That you were to maintain it, right? So essentially, if that is the case, you're going to take all of these divided by four. Divide this by four, divide that by four, and then you look at it as a single anchor. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, as long as remember- the cone distance doesn't overlap, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Now, um, the other thing is that when we look at this, um, what we want to, let me think. Okay, what we want to also consider is that we are, um, if you look at the, the ASC 7, 16, chapter 13, and you look at the table where it's got the APRP, Mm -hmm. there's one other column that says omega right and omega is 2.0 and omega it says that anytime you connect to concrete or masonry if you look down somewhere it says that you need to amplify your load so what that means is that this is 400 now this is 200 now and that's what it's saying oops oh that's midterm guys oops let me uh scribble You guys follow? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that's it, essentially how you would solve it. And so um, the, the, the project is asking you to go ahead and use the software, the design software. At the same time, I want you to calculate one anchor shear, one anchor tension, and also put that into the column and see if you can match it to the Tough. from Yeah, to, yes, exactly. Have you oh, used okay. the software before? It's up to you, right? I, I'm not going to dictate whether you use software first or whatever. Oh, uh, no, but no, I just no. said, I'm asking if you've used it before. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Eric was... would kill me if I never used the software. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was wondering because this is a uh, never used this before. So, yeah, need what, some help. once you actually. Um, kind of play with it, it actually becomes pretty simple. Okay. Yeah, and I was just in office hour with Wilfred um, and their group, and uh, he, he had already figured everything out. Oh, um, my playing With everything, so well, he got... That's Wilfred. Like that's Wilfred you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> that's yeah. That's Yeah, he, he's, he's figured all that stuff out. So, um, um, yeah, feel free to either ask, uh, but if you, if you play with it enough, you'll start to see that you can modify a lot of things pretty nicely okay yeah i haven't tried it out yet i'm pretty sure try it yeah. out okay um, okay um <clears throat> one thing to watch out for okay is that you'll see that the the, the the demand is pretty high actually um looking back at it i think the for um uh, because i think the seismic parameter at calcio is pretty high uh, what we have like showing right now may not necessarily work based on what i wrote on the page two or three of that stuff Mm -hmm. So you, it is going to be up to you to decide how you guys are going to work around that. Something to uh, think about. In other words, what I have shown there will most likely not work is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, in summary, right, you get your F sub P force, you find out your TC couple, you find out what the tension is, you divide it by total number of legs, right? And then you'll find it what it is per base plate. 
And it's pretty normal for you to kind of take the base plate and look at it that way. Now, what I want to tell you is that that DeWalt software actually has the ability to model your entire unit, this, this whole entire thing. Now you could do that, okay? Um, it, it's a lot more work in the sense that you have to now get really involved with the modeling in, in the DeWalt software. But the advantage is that if you ever do that, um, let me just kind of explain what it what it's the, the advantage, right? Is that 